In this demo, we're going to walk through a ASP.NET application, an MVC application to be specific, um, that's heavily server-side based, and we're going to show how this thing can actually communicate with something like Strato with block apps. Um, I get a lot of uh, feedback from the field about, uh, you know, these things look great. We have a lot of APIs and a lot of different things out here, but getting some real-world demos out here is kind of key to get people thinking about how to actually start building their dApps uh, using existing technology, whether it's Node, Python, Java, .NET. So in this case, we're going to use a. Uh, I built a simple application here that essentially allows us to. Uh, create a new accounts and everything through MVC application through ASP.NET and it, on a blockchain as well as upload new contracts, uh, be able to track versions of contracts, um, those types of features. We're adding some more features to it with transactions and whatnot, but right now we just have kind of the simple scaffolding there to get this running. So I just want to show you how that works and it involves a couple different components. So the first piece would be the actual uh, blockchain. So we've talked about Strato a few times here today and uh, the first thing we need to do is click on new, type in Strato, uh, just so anybody that hasn't seen this We'll click on Strato, and again, we have a nice description. We have the developer documentation. We click Create down here in the bottom corner. Uh, and tell it what we want to name it, how big uh, we want the VM to be, and what user account to use. And in a few minutes, we have our own Strato instance. Um, so we have Strato running. Uh, we also have a block instance running here. So I have my MVA demo. Block is running here on port 8000, pointing to my Strato instance that's running up there in Azure. Uh, the other component that we do need is document DB. So in this case, we're actually going to be storing some metadata about contracts in our DAP. Uh, Block doesn't store everything about the contract. Specifically, the thing we want to track is a relationship between an owner and a contract. So I'll show you how that kind of works. Uh, but what you need to do beforehand, let's go look at the actual application. So here's the app. Um, and if we go into our web config, where we usually keep our configuration values, um, you can see inside of there, uh, we have some things here. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this. So we have some off-chain components here. Uh, we have a Strato endpoint up here. Um, so the Strato endpoint obviously is pointing to our local host. Um, this is going to our block instance. It's going to talk to Strato. And then here are off-chain. Essentially we have a URL here that's going to go to um, whatever database that we create for document DB in Azure. And then we have the key uh, associated with that. Now I haven't updated a key, but I did create a uh, this ahead of time so we didn't have to wait on it. You can see it's right here and I'll show you where you can get the keys at. So once you provision one of these um, the next step is you just need to get the keys so we can communicate with it. So we click on keys over here. Let me show you where that was. It's right here on the, the left nav and then inside of here again here's our URL. I could copy that out but I already have it and I'll just grab the primary key and these are read write. We also have read only keys if you just wanted to do read only. So there, now we've updated that. Now you also notice there's a couple values below that, which is the storage DB name and the storage collection name, we call it. So inside of here, um, DocDB stores things slightly differently. It's a NoSQL type database. And so we essentially create a namespace over here, a collection. You could think of it almost like a, uh, like a table in a relational database, for lack of a better term, and then database just being a, a, a bigger container that's holding multiple of those collections inside of it. So um, the cool thing about this is we don't have to define any schema, and we don't even have to create any of this stuff up front. We just basically put these two pieces of info, the storage name where the DocDB repo namespace is, and the key to access it. The app will take care of creating all this stuff for us. Now, um, let's walk through. Oops, uh, I didn't save that, so let me go back and save that. Just drop our key in there, we'll save it. Um, so basically, um, a typical application here. Uh, so at our startup over here, uh, we have our bundle config, which has our normal stuff. We have a couple of JS files that we've added in here to handle the client side of it. Um, obviously, it's a bootstrap application. We have an account, a contract, and a transaction controller. And each one of these has their own methods. So very rusty that we have, you know, you can basically get all the accounts, get a specific account, and create an account. Wouldn't really make sense to delete account uh, because these are on the blockchain. Uh, contract, we have similar model here um, where we basically have a way to retrieve all contracts, retrieve by name, retrieve by name and address. So a bit more granularity there. Um, and that's where we've added some of the features with the 
uh, DocDB. And then we also have the transaction controller, which is something that we're working on to basically allow you to create transactions and kind of interact with those. Um, but I'll just be demonstrating the contracts and accounts here uh, today. In the models folder, we basically have our data models. Um, so these are everything from our block accounts to our block contracts, uh, as well as our signatures, which you can see have things like the owner address, owner name. Um, these are some of those new things that we've added there. And then we have some view models as well. Uh, and our tra transaction model is actually defined there as well. So if we fire this guy up, um, let's go ahead and start the application from inside Visual Studio. Um, this is an app that obviously we could deploy up to Azure or on-premises if we choose so in the future. Um, but right now we'll just go ahead and do a build and run this thing locally here uh, on, our, on our machine locally. So what we should see after a few moments is um, IS Express starts up and we get our application started up here. We'll see um, kind of a simple UI here that allows us to basically uh, do some CRUD operations on these different uh, types of components that make up the blockchain. So here we go. We have our DAP. We have some good links over here for setting up a new block server. Um, you can click on these. These are all hot links. Yeah, they go out to the real stuff. Here's the integrated experience with Visual Studio and then the API documentation. You can see up top here we have accounts and contracts. So if we go into accounts, what we should see here, we can actually look at the back end. You can see we call get users. Um, so we can actually see the call coming through, but we don't actually have any users yet. So in this case, we want to go ahead and create users. So we we'll just click on this little plus button here, and we could say, OK, we want to create a user, and we're just going to call this test user. Give him a password of test, and we'll go ahead and create him. Sure, we'll save the password. So now you can see that uh, the test user got created here. We have a little tile, and we have an address for him. You can also pop out here and see that we actually did a post with the test user. He hit his faucet. Uh, right here was the faucet call. Remember, that's going to give him some ether. Um, so we kind of have a, a cool thing there with the user. And we could add more. I mean, we could have uh, test user 2, test. A and they just keep adding on here, right? So you get the idea. Now, once we have some users, we can also go through the, the contract section as well. So in the contracts, uh, we'll give this a second to load up here. Now, what's happening now, because it's the first time, it's actually going out to that DocDB and seeing that, hey, I have an account out here that I can use, but I haven't created anything. Remember, we didn't create anything inside our DocDB. So what's interesting is if you come out here now, I'm just popping out into Azure to that DocDB, what we should see here is we have a database that got created called Sign DocDB, and we also have contracts inside of there, which is going to hold our uh, contract information. Now inside of here, um, we have some pretty cool tools up here to allow us to kind of explore what's happening. We have this document explorer, and let me show you where I clicked on that so you're clear. It's right here. Um, if you click on that guy, basically comes up and lists out all of your databases and then the collections inside of those. So here we have contracts, and then we can basically create new ones up here. We can upload them, we can refresh, and if there was any, they would show up right here. Now we'll see that actually fell out as we start adding some. So in here we say, hey, we got a contract here. We're just going to call this the simple storage. Uh, we'll use that as a good example here. We'll call this kale admin. Uh, actually, we need to use test user. That's our test guy. We're going to give the owner of who this guy is. And then we have to give the actual source. Now um, what I'm going to do is just pop over to um, our block instance and grab uh, one of those sample contracts. So just give me one second here, we'll grab that. So here's our simple storage. Again, same one that we used in the other demos, but we're just going to use this for demo purposes. So we paste this guy in here, hit create. Now what's actually happening here now is we did a local compilation and we signed it with our key. So basically uh, the test, remember I had to put the user in there, so test user actually used his keys to actually sign it. So here's the address of where it lives on the blockchain and uh, you can actually see different versions. So right here's the first one. Now what's cool is if we said, okay, I want to upload the same contract. Maybe I made a change to it, you know, in the future. Um, so we fixed a bug or something in it and we want to go ahead and re-upload it. So if I upload that, 
what you're going to see is this. I don't know if you can see that, but if you notice, this little uh, badge here actually changed to two because it's basically saying, hey, we actually have two versions of that now um, that live on the blockchain. And this is the latest one, the CEB8CC. If you click on this, you can actually see a running list. Um, and the one at the bottom is the latest one. But So this was the earlier one, this is the later one. And you can actually click on these things. Um, and it'll take you out to, uh, it should open another web browser here, and take you out to block itself and allow you to actually debug that thing. Um, I'm going to jump over there for a second, but that, that'll pop up another tab and allow you to actually exercise the application. Now what's cool is if you come in here too and said uh, the same contract, so simple storage again, but this time we use a different user, so we use test user 2. And we paste the exact same source in here, watch what happens. So this guy is a separate user, so it actually created another instance over here, and this guy has his own versioning going on. So you can see that that's one of the ways, and if you look out here in Doc Explorer now, if we hit refresh here, you're going to see we have just some records starting to power up here. So this is the identifier for the first one, which basically is keeping track of those two contracts and saying, hey, they actually go with this owner and his name is test user. And then if you look at the second one, you see he only has one instance right now, and it's actually pointing to this owner, which is test user 2. So just a simple way to start leveraging some of the uh, off-chain components. Um, and something to keep in mind is that the off-chain components and the stuff we're keeping here is simply addresses. So it's simply addresses, we have an owner name and a contract name, other than that, that's all we have off-chain. Um, so we haven't encrypted anything because there was no need. Um, whether these addresses are already available on the blockchain, you could go get that information freely um, if it was on a public blockchain. If we wanted, if we chose so, we could use our keys to actually encrypt this data as well. So it's a kind of a cool case where we can pull things off chain and be able to use those uh, to, to basically scale the system a little bit better and uh, just have anchors that exist on the chain, um, just using that term to kind of say, hey, we have our accounts and we have an actual contract as an anchor, but we have a bunch of other metadata that maybe doesn't need to be in the smart contract and we can kind of keep that off chain. So I hope this just gave you a, a, a little bit of a taste for what we can do. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to continue to expand on this example and, and it'll allow you to create transactions and all those types of things that go along with that on top of this. But I hope this was a good start for you on DAP and as well as some off-chain components.